and hello everyone welcome to this video of uh, lab view um, so last video we were talking about uh, how to get a fast Fourier transform now um, well here we these are just some bare bones basics of uh, uh, um, just want to introduce you to where all these uh, useful functions are but let's say we want to do something a little bit more useful right um, a little bit more relevant to uh, real life so for example let's say I play a note for a wave sound and I want to determine what frequency it's at so if you look I mean I have an, an app here called Lingit uh, it's from Linux you'll be able to find it in the Linux Mint store and uh, you will be able to see what frequency uh, for example, what frequency um, I'm playing. All right, so you can see uh, this this uh, bottom bottom spectrum here. This is a spectral plot. Uh, you have the number of decibels versus the frequency. And if I were to play a C note on my guitar, right, a C. I can also like um, hum a C. C. If I play a C note on my guitar, you'll be able to see. You will. You'll be able to see a lot of uh, uh, characteristic frequencies, right? Okay, and you'll see that a C is about one hundred and thirty-one hertz. Okay, so this is a C note on my guitar. Okay, so. Let's say I want to have a. Uh, yeah, let me put let me put my guitar back. Let me let's say you want to have a, a C note, and you want to produce this kind of spectrum so that you can see, um, what what are the characteristic frequencies that you are, you are playing, okay? How do you get this done in that view? Now this is a just another fun project, but it lets you get familiarized with. Uh, some of the uh, files in lab view. So what do you do? Okay, first thing first, uh, you will go to the, um, let me see, yeah? signal processing. Go to the signal, uh, this should be, no, no, sorry. Don't, don't, don't go to signal processing, go to express, and you'll see this thing called signal analysis. All right, so right click your block diagram, go to express, and you'll go to this part called signal analysis. All right, what we are trying to get is uh, some spectral analysis, and we are trying to get the amplitude or power versus the frequency. Now, fast Fourier transform is an intermediate step to get us there, but it won't get us completely there because it will plot uh, amplitude versus frequency bins. It will not give us the um, amplitude versus or the power versus the frequency. At it will not give us the power versus like the absolute frequency. It will give us frequency bins. So there are actually a few more steps you need to uh, do to the fast Fourier transform in order to get it there. But uh, if you want it the fast way, you go to Express, okay, right click, go to Express, go to Signal Analysis, and you should be able to see this part called Spectral. Okay, you will see this thing called Spectral. And you will go to this thing called spectral measurements and then this configure window will pop up and uh, you should be able to select something called a power spectrum okay the power spectrum will be able to <coughs> uh, excuse me yeah as power spectrum will be able to give you something like what you saw just now using that that tuner app i had on the linux mint it should be able to give you all the frequencies uh, arising from a certain sound. So I just click OK, OK, and then I'm going to put another graph here, in a waveform graph, OK, I'll put it somewhere here, and I will just name this graph, I'll call it power spectrum, all right, power spectrum, power spectrum. So this is a very uh, practical, or one interesting thing you can do with lab view. Okay, for frequency analysis is to use this spectral measurements all right so this uh, from the signal I'll need to uh, wire this in from here 
I'll drag this into where the signal is and then I'll drag this power spectrum out to this power spectrum graph alright so I'll uh, run it again and this is the power spectrum that you see as you can see this uh, power spectrum itself is pretty messy okay very very messy in fact uh, you will see all this noise over here okay all this noise over here uh, okay one thing that may be helpful right one thing that may be helpful is to use a lock scale on the y graph okay maybe not the lock scale okay well okay yeah um yeah, lock scale may be helpful in some circumstances but not this one i think i think this is already in decibels so that's why you have the amplitude uh, in negative okay so this is in decibels i think so decibels will be uh, plotted against frequency all right so if you want to take a note uh, yes if you want to take note you can look at this one and it says that the results will be in linear or decibels so uh, if i select linear it's going to look a little bit different it's going to look like this okay and you'll see one one particular frequency jut jutting out a lot okay so i can't it's very hard to see here what that is but uh, uh let's see yeah let's see uh let's if you want to scale your axis right click go to properties and you should be able to see under under the properties okay right click your graph go to properties and go to these tabs here there'll be appearance display format plots and scales so scales will be here you can scale your x-axis over here which is uh, I name it frequency unclick the auto scale change it to maybe 2000 all right and you should be able to see the graph from 0 to 2000 if you get it even less maybe 1200 okay you'll be able to see even better or if you want to change it to even maybe let's say uh, 600 you should be able to see that this uh, frequency here actually jumps out a lot okay and if you go to the y-axis if you want to again put in log form okay so where do you change uh, the settings between x and y-axis so under the scales the first the first drop down menu it will be able to show you uh, which axis you are changing it can be the x-axis it can be the y-axis so my y-axis is currently now on auto scale which is fine uh, but I can use the log plot on there it will be able to show you all these various frequencies that are there but of course this this will show you like where the loudest noise is in this power spectrum now if I change this back to okay so again um, never mind Be before I go back I uh, want to uh, go to the properties of this power spectrum again if you want to change the scales of the graph go go to the scales tab and click the axis that you want to scale properly whether it be the x-axis or the y-axis okay and then you disable or enable auto scale then you select your maximum and minimum as desired okay so that's that's how you do it if you want your your y-axis to be in log scale so this is what will look like in log scale okay otherwise you can leave it as a linear scale all right so this is where your x-axis is if you want to change your result from linear to decibels it will start looking like a log scale again okay so this is what the decibel spectrum thingy will look like okay very messy a little bit hard to read but of course if you if you uh, want to change it to linear it will be a lot easier to see where the uh, loudest sounds are okay now you want to if you want to see where this sound is this will be at uh, maybe somewhere give or take 200 hertz 210 hertz right so let's use the scaling in the x-axis go to about 250 and i'll change this to about the minimum to about 200 okay so you can see that the oops i should not click x okay 200 to 250 then click OK. Do not click Cancel. Alright, you can see that the 
um, that the maximum amplitude is somewhere around 221. If you're not sure what the what frequency that is, okay, okay you can look for this online tone generator 221. Type 221 here. I'll put this in the description, so don't worry. So this is the A note. Yeah, so that's that's what this uh, frequency is corresponding to, the A note, specifically A3 over here. Okay, so that's, that's a good thing of note. Now let's say you want a, a cleaner frequency, for example, like the guitar, the guitar tone I was talking about. So I already have it there in the GitHub, all right, in GitHub. So in the Git, in the Git repository I gave, okay, uh, in the Git repository I gave, I have a C3 note of about 130 hertz. This was the guitar sound I pre-recorded for you in case you want to use this as, as uh, your analysis file. So this is the C3 note. So if you want to put that into lab view, sure, it should be able to give you about 130 hertz. So let's change the path to put in this C3 note. Okay, let's change the path. Okay, uh, give it this C3 130 hertz. So as you saw just now, when I started this video, C3 is uh, at 130 hertz, the guitar C, and you will be able to see. Um, Okay, if you rescale it from 100 to 250. Okay, the one that uh, that's 130 hertz will be shooting through the roof here. You can see that this frequency is louder than perhaps any other frequency. And one thing you'll notice if you, if let's say I change this to 300, there should be another harmonic here. Okay, so why, why is this here? So this is about 132 uh, hertz. This one is about 264 hertz, which is 132 times 2. Okay, so this is the, I think there are harmonics or something. I can't remember the exact term. Uh, let me let me check for a while. Okay, sorry, the, the term is called octave. It's one octave up exactly, one octave up. So it's not a harmonic, but an octave. Okay, so harmonic is slightly diff uh, is very different from octave, okay? So again, if we, if we scale up, if we if we expect another note perhaps at 264 times 2 or in n multiples of uh, 130 you should expect one just before 400 so let me let me go it all the way up to about 1000 1000 so you see um 130 okay this one is about 264 this one is about 390 so you you kind of uh, have n n integer multiples of 130 or 132 so that's that's how this thing works so let's let's use uh, decibels so you can it's easier to see all the all the yes now this is this is what i'm looking for it will be able you'll be able to see all the relevant frequencies okay first at about 130 second about 264 here Third about uh, 390, then you you see that there are the frequencies are there in regular intervals. Okay, so this is uh, how you get the the spectrum, the power spectrum, if you're for playing a C note. Okay, so uh, one last thing before I go is uh, just want to introduce uh, this filtering. Now, what is filtering? Okay, uh, there's this toolbox you can do with LabVIEW. Okay, maybe, okay, forget it. Uh, filtering maybe is a concept I want to explain in another, in another video. So I'll just stop for now and I'll just leave it as, as, as such that, yes, uh, power spectrum. Power spectrum is uh, very good for you to see the relevant frequencies that uh, are, you know, inside a sound file, for example or in a very periodic oscillating kind of a, a signal okay so for example this was a C note given now you it will do a uh, power power uh, spectral measurement and you output a power spectrum you will be able to see what you saw in the tuner app that I, I had 
Okay, so if you're if you're not sure uh, what to do, you can always watch the video again. But yeah, that's that's all I have uh, for you this video. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful in getting uh, helping you get uh, some sound analysis and the power spectrum out from let's say sounds. Yeah. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.